Hi folks, so I recently read a rather interesting post on the Vivaldi web browser blog of all places. Uh, and apparently the news is, is that Vivaldi is the default browser on Manjaro Linux Cinnamon. Now I believe uh, Manjaro Linux Cinnamon is a community edition um, and I will assume, not really knowing the inner workings of how Manjaro works, that the community who are involved with the project get to decide the default applications installed with the project, right? So if I've made any false assumptions there, please feel free to let me know in the comment section below, email or Mastodon. So, um... Today, and also, like, I'm just going to start off by saying that it's, you know, they can choose whatever distribution they want to ship with, right? I'm not here to, like, say that they're making a wrong choice or a right choice or, or whatever. Um, and, and I can't even really do that. I've used Manjaro before very successfully and not in a particularly freedom respecting way. Uh, I have installed Manjaro non-free almost every single time and usually because of NVIDIA drivers. But an interesting thing about uh, Manjaro um, is that it often, most of the, distrib the, most of the versions that I've, I've used have Steam installed as by default, which yes, many, 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 many people use Steam. So why not install it by default? Like it just gets it out the door. It stops people from, you know, like work, having to work it out. Like it's great for new users. Steam, of course, is not a proprietary application. But also um, Manjaro made some waves uh, was it a few months back or even last year when they were looking to include, I think it's um, one, one office suite available to their... Um, to their users that wasn't open source. Now, I can't speak to the quality of LibreOffice versus uh, another Office application that isn't proprietary. I can't remember what its name is, hence why I'm, I'm not saying it. I don't want to say what I think it might be in case the one I think it might be might end up being free and et cetera, et cetera, right? But um, I think for the 99% of cases, I've used LibreOffice a fair bit over the years, and it suits most use cases. I can certainly understand with some people that might need some advanced spreadsheet functionality or something, you know, like like macros or something like that. that they might they might have their hands tied and have to go to Microsoft to have their software more developed in those ways. But I think for the overwhelming majority, particularly of home users, but many Office users as well, LibreOffice will do the job. But also, as I said in my previous video, I don't even think you need to install an Office suite by default. I think that, that the majority of people don't use an Office suite anymore, and those that do will probably use Google Drive. I just, I, that's just how, how the world seems to work nowadays. Um... So, so, so to those ends, if people want to use an open source, uh, or no, if people want to use an Office Suite open source or not, just just let them install it. Have a really good software center, which I I can't remember with 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 Manjaro what their software center was like or what their pack, but I don't remember having any problems with it. I remember just like it being intuitive enough, intuitive enough that I would just like click click click, yeah, got it installed. So, you know, not a problem, not a problem. Uh, I know that Mint is particularly well. Uh, Gnome's pretty good as well. There's a few good ones out there, but I, I can't remember on Manjaro. But it, it was well, like the fact that I installed every single program. I think I might have just dropped down to the command line for the majority of, of cases anyway. Command line for, for Pac Man, which runs uh, Manjaro, is easy enough anyway. It was piece of cake, really. Piece of cake. Once you just like memorize like the four various letter commands that you, you tend to use regularly, you're golden. And the documentation for it's pretty good as well in Manjaro. But so I do seem to think that like Manjaro is again another distribution that that is making that mistake of maybe installing too many things. Uh, out of the box um yeah mint has that problem manjaro has that problem and i think many other distributions have that problem just have the absolute basics i mean do we even really at the end of the day need a calculator app installed i mean i use it from time to time so maybe but like you know there's a lot of stuff that comes pre-installed that if it doesn't result in like a direct functionality I'm not entirely sure of its usefulness. Now, I think a web browser is one of those things you do need pre-installed. I think that probably is quite important because it means that if you do have a problem, you can open up a browser and search for help uh, and, and, and all of that business, right? So that then leaves the question, what do you use as your default browser? Um, I would, under those circumstances, 
if it was me, if I was the dictator of a Linux, not dictator of a Linux distribution, that's a horrible way of saying it, but you know what I mean? Like if I was, if, if the decision was solely down to me, uh, in, in many cases, the reason I use the term dictator is because like when these decisions are made, there's usually several people involved. Uh, there are usually surveys and stuff like that. And I've looked on the uh, the Manjaro forums. I'm not going to show it up here because I don't want to put anyone, you know, I don't want to put anyone on, on the channel that may not, may just wish to have remained on the on the message boards there, but most people would generally like in favor of this move. So it arguably it may in fact have been the right move for, for Manjaro, because if uh, Manjaro has fostered the community that just don't really care about free software, they just care about Linux, getting stuff done, good drivers, you know, maybe some gaming, all that kind of stuff, you know, maybe like, um, uh, Manjaro users probably like lean towards the sort of the power users and less away from the, the free software advocates. Obviously I'm making a vast generalization about a very popular Linux distribution. So, you know, don't, uh, don't at me on that when I understand there are plenty of exceptions, but yeah, like, um, Manjaro, uh, through the time that I've used it has not necessarily shown an explicit love of, of free software, but r much rather leans in the direction of, of pragmatism there, which I respect because there will be users that fall into that category. Um, uh, absolutely. Um, so, but when it comes to, to picking a default browser for your Linux um, distribution, I think that's one of those pieces of software that needs to be as freedom respecting as possible because it's like catering to as many needs as possible out of the box. You know, maybe you could say, like, it's, it, it, Linux is a little bit interesting insofar as you don't need a web browser to install a web browser, but for Windows, at least as I remember it, you needed a web browser to install another web browser. So, mm. but now you can just do um, do a Pac-Man command and, and, and you'll get any browser that you so choose as you would install it in Arch. So, I don't know, maybe, but uh, having like a default freedom respecting browser, even if it's not the best browser, um, is uh i would i would lean in that direction just to cater to as many people as possible i remember when i was at university and uh i got in with a crowd that were very uh posh really basically i won't say bones about it i'm i'm not particularly posh i know some people think i am because of the way i speak but but I, I got in with this kind of like uh nice you know i say posh like you know middle class crowd that used to like they entertained right they had dinner parties and all that kind of stuff and they used to cook for dinner parties uh, you know they used to have like you know as a, as a student it was some of the best food that we ever had and um the the host who hosted many such parties not just for for young students but myself but but all kinds of people um they had this weird did well i said this weird rule they had this interesting rule that all the food they cooked was vegetarian and um it was always tasty by the way always the food was always 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 really really good cooked perfectly uh you know in many cases you wouldn't you know you wouldn't have noticed that there wasn't any meat there um they, they were some of the most talented cooks I've ever sort of uh, known. But the, the ethos around it uh, is that, like, it's just, it was, it's easier to cook one meal and do it well and make it accessible to as many people as possible rather than having to cater here and cater there and then have, you know, vegetarians eat some sort of secondary meal that you've made on the side and don't really care about just so that they don't feel left out, etc., etc., etc. Um but yeah, like it was like, it, and it worked, like it was just a really, and these people had been entertaining for like a long time, like it was their thing. Um, and they, they were learned after many, many years that having something that was, you know, like serving up something that was vegetarian, but also delicious and something, you know, like it, it, it just pleased everyone. It was the, the path of least resistance. I know I'm probably gonna get some pushback from that comment saying, uh, da, 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 but like, no, it, it was just a solid, um, thing. And, and I, I suppose the same thing would be with, um, uh, with, with having an open source browser is that your default choice, the choice that you're going to lay in front of people should be the one that, mo that the least number of people will have a problem with. That's what it comes down to, right? You want to make the decision that the least number will have a problem with. Not necessarily that the most people are enthusiastically in favour of, uh, like the people enthusiastically in favour in the, in the thread of the uh, announcement, but yeah, the one that the least people, the one that least people have a problem with, the one that most people can use or are comfortable using. Some people have said it's easy enough to uninstall uh, Vivaldi and then install Firefox, and maybe that's fine for some people. Um, 
you of course have to trust that that proprietary software hasn't left any traces all things considered vivaldi probably hasn't but then you know if you're going to live your life by one those sets of rules you've got to try and you know you, you exceptions tend to be suspect or difficult or because every bit of software that has the potential to uh, infringe without permission on your freedoms is likely to come under the guise of something helpful or useful or necessary or even essential and that can be quite a problem a lot of the time and that's what and that's fundamentally what free software is sort of fighting against this idea of being backed into a corner by by, by proprietary software which by the way happens to I, i'm pretty sure most of us most of us have been backed in a corner where we have to use proprietary software otherwise we're cutting ourselves out of uh, maybe a segment of society or even in some cases a job so you know like that's you know i, I get the um the importance there that we can try and salvage a corner of the digital world that is freedom respecting now i'm not a, a, an absolutist in, in in free software because i do run proprietary software from time to time the the video codex that i'm using here this is mp4 that i'm recording on uh, because it just works best with my system and my hardware as it lays out i'm going to upload this video to youtube as well um my drivers as far as i'm aware are open source and um the vast majority of programs that i do use are open source what do i use this uh, i'm just gonna have a quick look through my menu here do i have anything here other than games i've got steam i've got games i've got itch which is actually the itch client is i believe open source uh, and itch is also a good place for open source games um right off the top of what i've got all of the proprietary software that i end up using tends to be through the browser and the cloud actually i literally do not see anything here that's not a game that is proprietary other than things like you know the codex for obs they're going to be they're going to be proprietary that's almost unavoidable i could maybe do all of my my um all of my multimedia stuff in absolutely free stuff maybe that might be a challenge for a year at some point um i i yeah like that that would be a heck of a challenge and go 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 a whole year using only explicitly free software I think on the desktop that would be easier than on the laptop. Laptops Wi-Fi often need proprietary blobs. Um, and if necessary, you know, you could make that exemption, um, exemption to actually get full basic functionality. Maybe you just, you know, I don't know, drivers in there or whatever. But like, generally speaking, other, you know, that would, just, that would basically, the biggest way that would impact me would be that I'd only be playing free and open source games. But, and also uh, I would be exporting to, I think it would be like WebM or something like that, which might... Uh, take a little bit more software uh, system resources so um so i don't necessarily disagree or agree that manjaro oh man i wonder i should have disagreed shouldn't i because then i could use like a really clickbaity video title why manjaro is wrong to choose this browser but like it's a community the, the community chose what the community wanted right that's 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 what it's that's what this kind of comes down to so you know, fair play to them for choosing what they want. Vivaldi does look like a good browser. People tell me it's a good browser. Um, and I understand that Mozilla keep just fucking up after fucking up. And it's, oh my God, isn't it causing so much heartbreak for the fucking community in it? That Mozilla are just so inept at this. That they jump on these trendy campaigns and they never actually, uh, and, and, and they blindly follow Chrome into the darkness isn't you know what this you know what what you know it, what's it all for really they used to be they, you know they're the final defenders of the free and open web they're funded by fucking google they keep removing features from their browsers and they lose users drip by drip by drip you know removing the rss feeds and then throwing in things like pocket and 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 all the other sort of gadgets that require uh, proprietary stuff as well it's just a fucking disaster what's happening at Mozilla. And I appreciate that, that it is open source and as such, projects like LibreWolf are keeping it going. But the fact that they're hemorrhaging users and their CEO seem to get massive increases in pay rises, despite, you know, like, wh why do we live in this fucking world, right? Where the, the, the salaries of Mozilla CEOs keeps going up and while the, the user share keeps going down. Like, how does that fucking work? That's fucking, it's capitalism for you, isn't it? That's what it fucking, you know, come, fundamentally comes down to, right? So, and and, and that, that's why, you know, 
basically Mozilla's failing is because it's it's not a non-profit. It's not really. It's lying, or it's you know it's. I believe the expression is a um, a for-profit non-profit or something stupid like that. But it's 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 just a disaster. It truly, truly, truly is. Because why? What you know? Give me what out right without the the freedom respecting stuff, right? Give me, you know, on a purely technical level, give me one good reason to use Firefox over Chrome. And I can only really think of one. It's a big one. I'll give you, it's a big one. Containers. That's what it comes down to. The fact that you can have, you can be logged in, you have three different tabs, you can be logged into three different, like, YouTube accounts or something like that. Now, to be fair, Google do profiles a lot better than Mozilla do profiles. So there's a very, very, very easy workaround. And in fact, Google have had profiles long before Mozilla have had these uh, category tabs. Um, I think Mozilla's uh, add-ons, whilst yes, Mozilla have have uh, have sort of taken away the strength and value of a lot of their add-ons. I think that they're better than Google's, and I do see over the years that Google have been cracking down a lot more on on their like moderating their add-ons a lot more. And I can easily see on things like the Chrome browser and all that, like things like ad block being banned and um removed from app stores and things like that because you know uh, as, as much as i don't mind people using ad block it is a way of of circumventing paying for something i guess isn't it i mean i'm not saying i, I mean uh i oh, google get really funny about this so i'm gonna try and word myself carefully ad block does not exist Hmm, yes, I'll go with that one. Adblock does not, I refuse. Yeah, well, Adblock, did I, who said, what, Adblock, ad, yeah, I, why, who said, I, I must be the, the wind. I don't know. What's Adblock, anyway? Is that, is that the place where porn comes from? I don't know. So, anyway, um, but anyway, like, uh, yeah, I guess so. Like, when a community chooses uh, amongst itself, something for itself you, you can never really criticize it um despite how clickbaity i want the title of this video to be manjaro community made a decision that i somewhat agree with uh, somewhat disagree with but i mean it's their choice to make right is that gonna be the title of the video um yeah it does look good actually i wish i could use it i i um I, I could not use a browser that's not open source because that, like, when it comes to the World Wide Web, when it comes to protecting yourself, when it comes to the transparency of code, when it comes to the the, the need and ability to be able to fork stuff, a, a web browser is the th the most important application of this that I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, maybe things like kernels and stuff as well, but like, yeah, when it comes to the desktop. And and to be honest, the thing that keeps Google around is that it's the Gecko engine. It's that it's a, it's an engine that's just a little bit well, a little bit. It is a little bit different because it's still trying to keep up with Google's fucking standards. That's the problem. I don't begrudge anyone for using something that's open source but uses the Blink engine or the WebKit engine or anything like that because fundamentally, they're all following Google's lead. Lude, Google has enough of a monopoly at this point that. Um, everything falls in step with it and it fundamentally gets to make standards. So, um, and, and I think the W3C kind of, like, they, they have not protected themselves. Like, they kind of let this happen. They could have fought back a little bit more, substantially more, and they didn't. Uh, they folded and it was pathetic. Um, not to say that the W3C is worthless there, but there have been some decisions that they've just been led on that have been um have been have been disastrous for the web there's no doubt about it um but that being said uh yeah like all browser engines that aren't google uh, aren't blink are trying to catch up with blink because if blink implements something uh that loads of other websites use or lo loads of web apps use th then either it doesn't you know work in another browser you've, you've just made your browser less functional functioning um, or if you decide, you know, if you decide not to, so if you decide not to implement it, your browser is less functioning, so you're going to pick up like fewer users, or you refuse to implement that functionality and only have the users that appreciate the nuance of the decision made, which is not going to be that many or things considered. Um, and it kind of sucks. It all kind of sucks. And this is why people like Hex say the web is burned. The corporations have kind of taken it over. But the trouble is, 
and again this happens with like capitalism is that like the small fish eat the bigger fish right the um the the uh, waterstones bookstore will will eat the independent bookstore but then amazon will come along and it will eat uh, Waterstones, and then there'll be something else. It might be Google will come along and eat Amazon at some point. When, when, you know, we become that that centralized in terms of wealth, uh, and and companies have that much wealth, and eventually we'll just end up with one company with everything. I mean, that's how our, how you know, you know, dystopian sci-fi kind of works, right? May you know, or maybe we'll have like you know five five fiefdoms, you know, and we'll have to choose one. Google. Microsoft, Apple, Facebook, Samsung, I don't know. Welcome, you know, pick, pick, pick your allegiance, right? Nail your banners to the mast. Um, so anyway, that was, a, that was a good rant, wasn't it? But uh, <laughs> um, I have a little hope for the web, but I, I think that in many cases it's, it's we're, we're building a little enclave that respects freedom. We're not taking it back. I'd love it. I'd love it. And I'd be right there with you guys if you were going to do that. But like, I mean, you look at some of the best browsers that are freedom respecting. You've got LibreWolf, which is just demozillard uh, Firefox. Apparently, ungoogled Chromium is also quite good. I'll try and get a, a review on that at some point. It's just Chrome or Chromium uh, with the Google stuff taken out. And I think you can get it on Flathub. But I think you also need quite a mod well, I say quite a modern operating system. I don't think it works on uh the current version of Debian that I'm on now, which is Debian old stable. So I should update this operating system at some point, shouldn't I? Really, really should. So interesting to see that. Reminds me a little bit of when Lubuntu used to have Chromium as their uh default. Uh, browser but again it does come into freedom respect in all, all honesty like uh, mozilla's firefox is not like wholly freedom respecting there are uh, analytics i believe there are even at some point google analytics embedded into um mozilla firefox at some point where where it would have a look you know where it would use telemetry through google it uses google of course as its primary search engine uh, that's why uh mozilla gets so much money from google and mozilla get a crazy amount of google um, and it's not really because of that. I mean, of course, that would obviously be a condition of it, but it's also uh, Google want Mozilla to remain alive because then Google can claim that they're not a monopoly whilst controlling all opposition through the purse strings. So it fundamentally allows them to set web standards free of any kind of uh, legislation brought in by monopolies commissions um, or like Amer American federal legislation. And um, because, look, they can just point and go, oh, no, no, we're not the only browser. Firefox can do this kind of stuff as well. But, of course, Firefox is just, you know, when, when they develop, they develop to, to Chrome standards. Um, they develop with uh, Google's money. Um, you know, they're a dog being led by a leash at this stage, and it kills us, doesn't it? It just fucking tears your heart out, doesn't it? Breaks your heart. You know, some, it's, it's just like, you know, these big companies, they kind of ruin everything. And, um, yeah, and, and it is nuanced and all. I know, like, you know, I'm, I've got a video in the works that actually sort of sings reasonably high praise of Google, <laughs> which is horrible. I feel horrible. It's all complicated in the world because everything is tainted with, with greed and dominance and uh, exploitation and deception and duplicitousness so um yeah as uh that took a long time that was, that was 24 minutes there to tell you that uh yeah manjaro cinnamon is is moving its default browser over to vivaldi uh, what engine does vivaldi use they use the blink engine can i can i google that now because i would be interesting because it's you know i mean webkit all is also got wrong vivaldi i've got to do a vivaldi browser aren't i um, any any Four Seasons fans out there? Uh, and I'm looking probably for the Wikipedia page, right? I don't mind Four Seasons. I'll put it on in the car sometimes. Uh, release. It's written written in C++. Uh, operating system available for available for uh, Mac, Windows, Android. Don't see iOS on there, but there we go. 
Uh, size, type, license, proprietary freeware, it says there. Uh, does it have the engine? Rendering engine. I'll just do a... Come on, Wikipedia, you've got that. Okay, I've got to go to the web browser rendering engine page. Wikipedia's not bad with this kind of stuff, but you've just got to find the right page, in you? Uh, a browser engine. Notable engines. Uh, Gecko, Trident, Edge HTML, KHTML, WebKit, Blink. And the three working today, the three most known is uh, Gecko, the oldest, uh, WebKit, and Blink. Blink was invented or released in... 2013 by the looks of it um so oh uh, google originally used webkit for uh for chrome but forked it to create the blink engine all chromium based browsers use blink as do applications with cef electron or other any okay any framework that embeds it uh, apple created webkit uh, the WebKit engine for its Safari browser by forking KHTML. So you had KHTML forked for WebKit for, by Apple, and then WebKit forked by Google. A blink. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? So it's all a fork of a fork of a fork. See, that shows you how uh, just complex browser rendering engines are, and why Gemini is really good in so far that it takes like anyone can just cobble together a rendering engine. Each each browser that you use for Gemini pretty much has a has its own developed rendering engine. Uh, whereas you're picking between basically three. Um, but um. I'm just going to Google it. Not Google it. Duck, duck, go it. What that, is that? Right. Built using Chromium, but different. Okay, so we're looking at it, so it is Blink. Okay. I'm sure many of you were just shouting at you. It's Blink, it's Blink, it's Blink. Um, yeah, yeah, it says on the Valvaldi website they they rely on chromium so it, it does look like it's a um, re, you know, like a chromium reskin and some of the features that it has actually looks pretty cool. The trouble is, though, are they going to de-Google it when they put it in? Probably not. They're just going to just whack it in as they do. Um, I know that at least de-Googled Chromium from the blogs that I read and the tests that I've read about, it seems that it's genuinely de-Googled. So, you know. And I think the last version of, of de-Googled Chromium that I've tried runs Stadia. It runs these streaming services. It seems, it seems fully functional. It doesn't seem they've stripped out any important elements that will prevent you uh, from, from playing streaming games, Stadia and so forth. So It's beneficial in that regard. So there we go. Also on top of that, of course, is that because Chromium is a snap now, so if you're running an Ubuntu-based Ubuntu distribution, you're going to need to have snaps to install Chromium. And even if you do apt install snap, it'll just, it'll just install the... the uh, app, sorry, app to install Chromium. It'll just it'll just bring down the snap for you. You've got no say in that. So you can just install a flat pack, install ungoogled Chromium. Do, do, do. You got something that's a little bit better. It still comes from a package container, but you know less proprietary, right? So yeah, all right, yeah. Vivaldi looks great, but it also does look like uh, you know that there's a business model in there, right? Um, so there we go. Uh, I can't comment to it in terms of specifically being privacy respecting. I'm pretty sure if it said it was privacy respecting, it would be it would be we, we'd have you know known about it. Uh, but I think they're just aiming for a really good UI, which they seem to have achieved with a few with a, with a substantial number of extra extra features. I think I did like try it once a long time ago, and it was like fine. But again, can't use it. Well, only you. I'll you know I'll I'll use a pretty bad browser as long as it's it's free and open source because to me it being free and open source is more important than the actual quality of the application itself. I know it's not reasonable to expect everyone to abide by that, and there will be times when even I make an exception um, because there will be some really bad free and open source software, and then you know comparably um, proprietary stuff much better. But the trouble with proprietary software, especially software made by a big company is that they can put lots of money and lots of staff on the jobs that volunteers just don't want to do. 
So, you know, there, there are some with with a lot of these volunteer projects, you get vol- loads, you know, loads of volunteers for certain parts of it and very few for others because there are just some jobs that are just horrible to do by most people's standards. And as such, you know, paying people, pe- paying people a few bucks to do them, you know, helps. You know, I'd like to see free software monetized better, but then in a lot of cases, when you bring money into it, it kind of brings a degree of corruption into it as well, right? Which is, again, an argument for simple software that people can develop without having to spend the rest of their lives doing it, you know, without having to overinvest time in it, basically, uh, and get burnout. Uh, and also, just on a side note, the Linux community, we can be nicer to people that want to experiment and play with things that we don't necessarily see value in. If someone wants to fork a project, why is it whenever someone forks a project, they always get shit tons of hate for it? Like, it's just, like, not necessary. It's not cool. If it's going, you know, like, like, tr- think of it like evolution, right? You know, a new piece of, you know, you got, like, each new fork of a piece of software is like a, a mutation, Either it's going to help um, make the ecosystem stronger as a whole, or it's going to wither and die and and, and be considered a, an exception that never makes it. Well, you know, like just just treat treat the path of free and open source software like fate, or like the the direction of of, of the universe. I guess I don't know. Just my two cents there. Right, hmm. a little bit of an extra ramble on top of that ramble for you there today. When really, literally, the headline could uh, could literally just say it. Um, but Vivaldi, Vivaldi seemed pretty happy. Vivaldi seemed quite supportive, all things considered, for um, uh, for this. Uh, but yeah, you know, they made the decision. It's not. I mean, I, I can't even call them. You know, I can't even call them out on it at all because if you if you're installing Steam by default, you know, you've already you've already sort of crossed that bridge, haven't you? You've already broken that seal. Uh, so, so, yeah, go for it. If it's, if it's what the community genuinely wanted, then, you know, God bless them. Um, so, yeah, but that's all I've got to say about that, really. Uh, thank you very much for, for watching. Uh, I'll put some links into this, to the stuff that I've read, um, just, you know, in case you want to have a peruse of it yourself, but all in all, I hope you have a nice day. Thank you all for watching. It's a pleasure as always. And again, as always, uh, topic ideas are um, are always helpful. Uh, if not in the comment section of the video, Mastodon is definitely the best place to, to get a hold of me. Um, Chrisware at linuxrocks.online. I'll be, it'll be linked to on my uh, my YouTube channel page. That's where you can find all the good links to all the stuff that I do. Chrisware.uk is my website where all of the links to all of the stuff, all of the content that I make. Because I make some stuff that's not Linuxy, you know. Uh, I've got a photo blog. But you'll have to go. go you'll have to go to chrisware.uk in order to um, check it out. So yeah, that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Toodaloo. and off.